We're going to now switch to Portuguese in order to make it easier for us to speak. We are here with the purpose tonight to talk about mediumship and to speak about mediumship under the guidance of our Father who fills us in this atmosphere of light, we're going to consider that the basis of mediumship is the mind, and the mind is the expression of the dynamic expression of the Spirit's power. We have, when we are incarnated on the earth, our physical body with its structure, and the brain represents the mind alongside with men in our environment. The mind, therefore, emits what we call thoughts. And the thoughts is the emanation, the intelligent emanation of the creature, which we will find through the waves that it, it represent associations with other manifestations, which are also thoughts, where there are mental waves Wherever there are mental waves, there are associations with us. And thanks to that, we have the exchange. Mediumship is going to be more profound and more broad according to the evolution of creatures. We cannot be, leave aside to consider that the work of interchange between higher spheres depends a lot by this on the structure of knowledge and development of the creature. And the periods that are more rudimentary of development of the creature, for instance, in the phases where we have, where we have the mosaic tables, like first organizations that are social, this exchange is going to be with forces of nature and it will cultivate itself, it will worship that the elements of that time, of this stage, recognize themselves as being manifestations of the divine. So the trees, the rocks, the ten, the weather, and all of those resources of nature will be the ones that naturally are going to be worshipped. This phenomenon lasts up until our days today, and we will find in many societies in general, those who still worship the stone, like the crystals, as well as the vegetables in the cases, for instance, in Brazil, of the, um, the scent diming, which is a tea leaves, or as well as worshiping animals. Let us not forget the figure of the golden lamb that comes in the biblical stories, the worshiping of the golden lamb. The process of advance, of moral advancement and intellectual advancement allows us to exit its dimension and reach the causes that gave origin to the world that we live in. This process, it requires an intimate preparation for the creature because it because it addresses not just the objective proposals of the environment but it seeks the behind the scenes the backstage which we denominate as causes that are found in the spiritual life our dear friend medium Chico Xavier author of so many books in reference to light in Brazil, defined at one point that the material world is the materialization of the spirit, spirit life. And he brought us a very simple idea, helping us to understand that we are living in the effects and not the causes. We walk in the material realm, but our origin is all spiritual, although we do not know its origins. Throughout history of humankind, the revelations that we have received, they have allowed to come to our environment 
through the mediumship channels. And with the Spiritist revelation, which is a science before everything else, a practical and objective science which studies the phenomena that took place at the time in a very ostensive and abundant way, but phenomena that were present throughout the history of humanity. In this science, we're going to find explanations of the mediumistic phenomena that need and require mediums in order for them to be processed. And mediums are the instruments between dimensions, between forces, between knowledge spaces, between vibrations and possibilities. By studying the mediums, Alan Kardec is able to draw back to the process of mediumship, which is universal. We have mediumship as well as with the universal cosmic fluid, which gives rise to every kind of matter. It is born and emanates from God and modifies itself, creating everything that we know throughout the cosmos. Mediumship. There is a gen generality to it because it is the process of exchange between dimensions and it is a universal law because we live, all of us, under a regime of solidarity or interdependence as Emmanuel states, the spirit guide of Chico Xavier. This process of solidarity or interdependence defines that we are attached or connected with one another. So as a result, forcibly, we portray ourselves and we portray others. In a scientific study of the mediumistic process which occurs with mediums and will give rise to the phenomena which are natural and not extraordinary or wonderful as we had originally thought, Alan Kardec will demonstrate that there are not only many abilities, many peculiarities that run through according to the evolutionary history of humanity, but but there is a component that qualifies mediumship, which is called moral influence of the medium. He is the divider of waters, if you will. When one studies mediumistic phenomena, we're going to observe that it can happen in two main planes in general. The first plane, the physical effects phenomena. Within them, the, spirit, the spirits enter our realm because they use the human energy in order to make themselves felt, perceived, seen. And we have the ones of intelligent phenomena, which is when the medium is capable to go to the spirit realm and make the bridge, co decoding what he perceives in the spirit realm that he registers, what he gathers from the spirit realm. Through these two channels, we're going to be able to explain, explain the whole gamut of phenomena and the exchange, which is universal. It does not at all belong to spiritism. It has always been universal. But the religions, the philosophies, the cultures gave to it the expressions that were mystical in nature according to the knowledge that they have at each time and era. Uh, covering the topic in a very calm and serene way, our dear medium Chico Xavier in Brazil with great wisdom explained at one point that he always lived with, with what the world calls 
extraterrestrials. Because the spirits live in other dimensions. And in this other dimension, they, they possess technological resources which make up for the deficiencies of the spirits who still don't have greater moral elevation. Because, because spirits of a great moral and spiritual elevation, they don't need technology because they po possess that power within themselves in order to dominate any kind of material matter, in order to dominate also the ones that are below their, their own spiritual conquests. Spirits that possess light with a lot of potency and are able and are able to make any kind of operation happen but there are spirits that live organized amongst themselves in spiritual zones very close to the earth those require instruments such as cars vehicles uh, equipments in order to produce the excursions of help to the humanity. We are here explaining this because we need to understand that we deal with beings from other planets or worlds, from other vibrational zones of our own planet in such a way that, is, that they are permanent. And mediumship is the great channel for the interchange of these forces so that we can understand the assistance of God which is permanent to all of his children. There is a chain of work and this type of assistance of developing resources functions in a way of enabling the spirits according to the different stages and degrees of evolution that they find themselves in. Thanks to this chain of work that expands into the infinite, we have the just and wise order of the universe, so that all elements that are utilized, all the potencies, are born from the Creator, from our Father and are dynamic, dynamically produced according to the different vibrational zones that they are acted in. When we're going to study mediumship as it pertains to our world, we're going to notice that it shows itself with peculiarities according to the nature that the medium brings from his own past. We're going to find the mediums who are indebted to the balance and the health of people. And we will notice that he will have an abundance of fluids, which is a characteristic of those healing mediums. He brings with him an abundance of fluids when he doesn't use this extra charge, this extra ability of a fluidic nature, which is defined as an ectoplasmic donation. He, f he gets sick or sometimes loses his mental balance. And every medium will feel this way when he doesn't channel this force. We're going to observe we're going to observe the writing medium, the psychographer, experiencing difficulty in order to retain the impulse that he feels to write permanently when he truly has this kind of a commitment. We're going to notice the medium that speaks, psychophonic medium, experiencing difficulty, which is very common amongst them especially when they haven't educated their mediumship in an environment like ours, the spiritist environment, because he feels a need to talk and he starts connecting different subjects without stopping in a way that he makes the listener very tired. 
that's a characteristic of the speaking medium. We can explain that by the ability that he has to attune with situations and entities without realizing. And he needs to drain this material which invades his psyche. When he speaks, he feels relieved. The clairvoyant medium, which is the one who sees with clarity the spirit realm, if he's not able to report these news to anyone, he starts to feel anguished, pressured, because also that perception establishes a, a magnetic pressure in his nervous system. There's a very interesting case of our Chico Xavier when he was already with his second mother after all he endured with his godmother. One day he, uh, he came to his mother and asked permission to tell her the things that he saw and he would, would hear and see from the spirits. And she said to him, my son, I'm here to help you. I want your best. I don't understand anything of these things. But if, if by speaking about it, it relieves you, then you can tell me and I will listen. And with that, he was able to relieve the charge of his perceptions out of his psyche. It was a way of relieving himself because he lived up to that point massacred by the spirit companions, including the priest that used to talk to him in the physical world, that the priest would tell him that that was from the devil, that he couldn't talk to anybody. He was prohibited. But the spirits kept showing to him, and that was something that he liked, that interchange, and he couldn't do it until he lived with his second mother, who was able to relieve him even though she didn't understand about it, but she allowed him to talk about it, to vent the material that he was able to gather from the spirit realm. So these faculties that we are citing are the ones that are most well known. For instance, Shiko had the fa faculty of psychometry. He was able to sort out the letters, the hundreds, thousands of letters that he received just out of psychometry by theme, without opening the letters, just by touching them. Many of his friends noticed, uh, witnessed him doing that throughout his whole existence and would help him to insert messages as answers to those people according to the nature of their problems. So we're going to notice a gamut of possibilities in the realm of mediumship. But it will present itself sometimes in a very complex, challenging way. Because the first movement of perception of the spirit realm usually is done through what we call obsession. Obsession is when the spirit realm, spirits that are tormented, take over the mind and the life of one incarnate person. It's the most common type of obsession, a spirit acting upon an incarnate that he doesn't like, out of revenge and dissatisfaction, for some reason that is negative. This process is it's not considered mediumship, but the illness of a person instead, from a psyche standpoint. But Emmanuel says in his wise texts that obsession comes before the opening of the psyche channels because it promotes a type of preparation in, in the psyche territory. Nothing is lost in nature. Everything ends up serving greater and higher plans. We can't, therefore, to create in the analysis of obsession as something exclusive. Because the process itself of the person's suffering induces it for them to mature in their potentialities, 
or it defines this maturity. Sometimes in a spiritist center, somebody arrives with a problem of obsession, and the person receives a pass, who's going to do the gospel at home, who's going to hear a lecture. Then later, the spirit either withdraws because it doesn't like this type of activity, or it learns and takes advantage of it because he's going to be assisted by the spirit realm. There are spirits who are very vengeful, very closed and hardened in their own ideas, who take a while to accept his assistance, but others are able to already experience the tenderness, the fondness, the help, and so they, they confess in a way and begin to be guided. This person that came to the center, sometimes feeling, hearing, seeing, or feeling bad because of the action of the obsessing spirit, she begins to learn in the spiritist center. And then later another entity that's more, more balanced, more subtle, more tranquil, begins to exercise the channel which the previous element, through a process of revenge, imprinting badness over, over them, was able to open in the first place. We're going to observe in this study of psychic development, also in other fields of religion or of psychic development, for instance, in the Afro-Brazilian religions, sometimes we go to an Afro-religious cult. In the Numbanda, there is an Afro-religious cult. There is something called a, a jida, through the rhythm of big drums, of clapping and songs, generates a rhythm that's very akin to that religious manifestations of the Africans, but also the native Brazilians who had such practices. This element is put into this circle where other, other ones vibrate around it, creating a current, and the person will turn, turn, spinning. The spirits enter that vibrational climate and try to push the door of their psyche because the fact that they're spinning enables the spirit to withdraw itself from the body and enter into a connection with the entities that are near. And so the person feels the effects, the habits, and the vibrational impressions that those entities imprint on them. It's a type of development, but rudimentary, if, when, if compared with the spiritist proposal, which is more scientific so that we can have an idea. It doesn't invalidate that process, but in fact, it is a process that it's still rudimentary in itself. We noticed that we mentioned the tea, which uses this, this herb. This herb forces the opening of the psyche. The tea makes it open. It's a mechanism that forces it. It's not, it does not invalidate its purpose, but it does have its side effects. We are all leaving from multi-millenary experiences through our reincarnations, where we've experimented everything, and those things are still around. But we are now entering into a spontaneous process of insertion into the cosmos, but through mechanisms which we denominate as scientific, philosophic, or scientific, philosophic, because which is what Spiritism presents to us. Our doctrine is not presumptuous. It studies facts, and in the study of facts, it raises principles, and these principles begin to conduct all of the processes. When we analyze mediumship in a practical way, the practice of mediumship in a spiritist group, for in the meeting, in the climate of prayer, we see a director, the mediums, 
and the people that donate the energies who are called vibrational ones. We have then, according to Allan Kardec, a collective being. It's not a person. It has formed a collective being. When we have an affinity, when we have this capacity of having that exchange, we create a communion. Through this communion, we create a vibra vibratory camp. Yeah. In this camp, we can define as a field that can be more potent or less potent. It will depend on the firmness of the people that are, are part of it. And this constitutes part of the process which st establishes the energe energetic field. The spirituality will observe, they will study. There's a book by André Luis that was psychographed by Chico Xavier called in the domain of mediumship. This book is very precious because it studies mediumship from the spiritual realm to here, whereas the medium's book studies mediumship from the view of from here to the spiritual realm. And then this book, they meet each other and they complement one another. We'll observe that they cite what's called a psychoscope, which is an instrument technological instrument from the spiritual realm, which is capable to measure the vibratory level, if you will, of the medium, his, po his potential. And it measures not only of the medium, but also of the meeting. And in this way, they study the capacity of the nuclei of the group that's there together in order to know what kind of assistance can be done with that group. In order that we'll find groups that are just starting out, that they bring, that they allow, they allow to enter in the vibratory field. They have protecting, protecting spirits around that vibratory as well laboratory belts. Yeah, there's protection for those meetings. When those that are, when those are spirits that are sick, that come, they come with the permission of the spirit guides for a specific purpose. It's not any spirit that can just come in these meetings unless the group is out of balance and it doesn't have this kind of spiritual protection. This could happen. And then it becomes an obsession meeting, not a obsession, but an obsession meeting. When the spirit enters, it enters without sacrificing the group who's not very experienced, who doesn't have a lot of potential yet. The spirit will enter, and usually he'll be placed in connection with to someone to whom he feels an affinity. Because mediumship, in a general plane, it is about syncrasy, attunement. But in practice, it is affinity. Attunement is generic, but affinity is specific. So the spirit goes around the table, and one medium will attract him. And he feels attracted to him, and that's when the connection is established. He doesn't enter the body of the person, per se. No spirit enters our body. It's a matter of adjustment of psyches, of his psyche with the psyche of the medium. In mediumship, there is three general types of manifestations. Let's consider that there's a speaking medium, psychophonic medium. In psychophony, the spirit approaches and the medium doesn't even need to leave his body, not even slightly. 
se afasta do organismo físico. Ele afasta do organismo físico. Because normally the, the medium would leave his body slightly, but he doesn't necessarily have to. He can stay very close to his body, slightly loose. And this time, the medium is conscious of what's happening under this condition. He's aware of what's happening. The spirit comes close, and he can transmit to the spiritual mind of this medium, because the mind belongs to the pure spirit. The brain belongs to the body, so he gives to, he transmits to the, the mind of the spirit that which he wishes, that which is feeling. The medium remains balanced, in, in peace, feels the vibration, and he will tell the director of that meeting, there's a spirit here, he's not feeling well, I have some strange ideas, suicidal, something along those lines. He doesn't alter himself, he doesn't come out of balance, the media himself. Because he's a medium whose spiritual body hasn't left his body very far. And the spirit is not acting directly upon his nervous system. So he's more aware of himself. And he'll be able to be an interpreter of the needs of that spirit. So there are mediums that are, has been educated because of this. It's funny because this educated medium, the spirit comes and he speaks, but he doesn't, doesn't lose his balance, he doesn't feel sick, everything is lighter and calmer. There's a type of medium that leaves his body a little bit more. This is a call, the semi-conscious medium. One is a conscious medium, we already talked about that. But this is the, the semi-conscious medium. He leaves his body slightly, and the spirit attaches himself a little more to his very spiritual body and lets his energy into the nervous system of the medium. So that medium may feel a little agitated, feels aggressive, his, his heart beats fast, his circulation gets going, because his, his organism is altered because of the proximity of the spirit with his nervous system. Because the fact that the medium affects him, leaves his body slightly, this allows a bigger connection to the spirit of the medium, to the spirit that's getting close to him, excuse me. So the medium gets a little out of balance. He feels slightly sick, and he will be able to express that. He's also an interpreter, living a little bit of the energy, the unbalanced energy from that sick spirit. But he, the medium itself, knowing mediumship and studying and working hard, he's like a filter. And for that reason, in the communication, everything that the spirit feels and says comes out. But he continues to be vigilant. That's the, that's the job of the medium, to be vigilant. And then there's a third type, which is called an unconscious mediumship. This is when the spirit looks at the medium, the spiritual body of the medium leaves his body completely. Mentally, he connects himself to the spirit. It's as if the spirit embraces him, the physical body of the medium, and that energy will take over the nervous system of the medium. And because the medium is a little bit further away, the connection is stronger. The spirit expresses a lot more. He shows a lot more of him or herself. The level of the imbalance is very noticeable. Through his gestures, the facial expressions, the way he speaks, because he's influencing the vibe. Vibratorially influences the nervous system of the medium. The spirits have a name for this. Usually, when it's a mentor that allows this, the, the, 
É um domínio de confiança. It's an affectionate, uh, an affectionate control Quando because it's one of trust. When there is no trust in this process, a fica the person becomes obsessed, spiritually Sim. obsessed. There is no moral balance in the part of the medium. He contaminates himself with it. And that's the case with the people that go out on the streets and take off their clothes or try to do crazy things in desperate ways. It's not him that's doing that. Something is happening. Indeed, something is happening. Another person now that he is entering and taking charge because in a way it dominates in the process of studying an obsession. This will be called subjugation which is, is what used to be called possession, cited in the, in the Gospels, in the New Testament. It's the so-called possession. But possession gives the idea that it enters the body and it doesn't enter. So the correct term is subjugation, as suggested by Kardec. In the psychography or automatic writing, we're going to observe that the element is going to go through through the same process, but there are other names for it. There is a term that's, that addresses intuitive mediums, which is when it registers the presence of the spirit that wishes to write, and it's as if he's going to have these ideas and starts to write it down. He's like an interpreter. There is the there is the semi-mechanical medium, which is when the spirit, due to the fact that he's a little bit more distant from the body, the spirit influences a little more his arm, the writing arm. He's not going to have the awareness of all the words necessarily, even though he may be aware of the subject matter, because he captures it from the spirit. He's somewhat attached to his body still, so he makes the bridge between the body and the spirit which expresses it in the world. So he will have the idea of the content of what the Spirit is writing, but he won't be able to tell exactly what are the words, because there's more of a mixture of an intervention that is a mix between him and the Spirit, and so the Spirit acquire greater, acquires greater freedom. One does not negate the other as far as quality. What will what will di dictate that is the moral structure of the medium and not the type of mediumship. And there's the third faculty called mechanical. And this faculty, in fact, is really nothing mechanical about it. What there is and is well explained in the medium's book for us is that there is a passive allowance. The medium is passive. What is passive? It's you surrender the instrumentality. If you trust and surrender, you don't interfere. That's when, that's where the question lies. Chico Xavier explained that when the spirits that were young, because he was older, and those, those guys from the 1970s with the slang of the time, the young ones that had died, he said groovies, so he would say slang of the time that he didn't know. It wasn't part of his upbringing. And so these young spirits began to channel the books and the messages. Those spirits created some type of a fluidic glove above his arm. Today there are very deep studies about it, about the dissociation of the arm with the cerebral structure. But she could told us that they would make him a fluidic glove ab above his arm. And this material was a type of glove that the spirits would insert their arms in and would begin to write immediately and directly wrote, would write through it. We have accounts of mediums, and Shiko endured that due to his capacity, would be able to write with both hands simultaneously while chatting with people. Those phenomena are, be, are were registered and exist. And this happens. You dissociate the members, you don't know what you're writing, the left or the right is hand are writing while being connected with the environment ar around you, talking and chatting. These are phenomena. These are peculiarities 
from mediumship. So we notice that in these two mediumships that are most common of our everyday the psychophony and psychography, they have these three nuances of surrendering or representation of the spirits in the obsessive obsession process. The medium who is unconscious, he needs to be very alert in as much as the medium of physical effects. Because be because due to the capacity that the physical effects medium has to emanate vital fluids, so-called ectoplasm, that it comes out of the cytoplasm of each cell, including the nervous cells. This material is, is very desirable by the inferior spirits who want to remain living on the earth. Usually, these are the ones that are vampirized or drained and they need to learn how to deal with their potentialities because otherwise they're going to enter through obsessive processes due to the so-called vampires of the spirit realm. The legend of the vampire, which is a myth, is a myth. It has its, it has its foundations, if you will, in, in this exchange between the spirit and the physical worlds. There are a lot of people that live like a Christmas tree. And we talk about this jokingly, but in fact the person walks around being sucked by entities. So the writer, Herminio Miranda, a Brazilian writer who died a few few months ago, a few recently, he, he published a book called Spiritual Condominium. Exactly because he studied the subject matter. Sometimes we're going to find a person, and if this person had the awareness or was a good instrument, the person would answer a question of ours. What is your name? As Jesus would say, as Jesus heard it, the answer, legion, because there was many spirits. In that moment, in that of Jesus, he already showed what an obsessive process was of a whole group of spirits on top of one person. And Christ himself in the Gospels told that when the spirit who's dirty, that, that is in being influenced and exits, and we don't be watchful to occupy the home again, when he comes back and he finds the room all cleaned, without any useful occupation, he's able to bring seven more. In other words, the subject matter is not new, so that we can have an idea. What are we able to raise with these mediumistic questions? From the starting point of the meetings that each person has a function, we're trying to show that mediumship is a fascinating topic because of what it can reveal, because what it can produce. However, it is also very dangerous. Very dangerous for those who is not interested in, to preserve himself. And in order to preserve oneself, you're going to have to assume and commit to a few disciplines. The element or the individual that makes a lot of money has to have the discipline to prepare himself with the ability to earn that money. The individual who is an athlete needs to discipline himself in order to have, have tremendous ability in the specific area that he works in. Everything in life has a price. Emmanuel used to say that to Chico. The spiritual aspect also. That's why Paul, in one of his epistles to the apostles, it is better to suffer in the good, because we suffer in the, in the experiences, we suffer everything. If I leave the street without taking care of the cold weather, I get sick. It's the process of suffering, given our lack of awareness. If I feed beyond what I need, if I feed myself, I'm going to have the consequence of it. So Paul says, it is better to suffer in the good. In other words, 
If I need to expand myself, if I need to expose myself, if I need to fight, that I may do this intelligently. That's the question. When we go back to the topic of mediumship and we're talking about the mediumistic meetings, the mediumistic meetings for educational purposes, it's controlled and the spirits go along with it according to the lack of experience of the group. But let's assume that this group grows over time, it develops, it has reached other milestones and other patterns, it has become very close with each other. And now we're going to make a parenthesis. What makes up a, a strong mediumistic group? It's a group that has the affinity amongst themselves, that has been able to nourish, nourish and nurture the spirit of fraternity amongst themselves. Because we can say mediumship is technical. No, it's not. Mediumship that we, that we hope for, the ones that we aspire to, it's not in itself just technical. It is qualitative. We've had, throughout the history of Chico Xavier in Brazil, in the city of Belo Horizonte, in the state of Minas Gerais, we had mediums who were extraordinary, besides Chico. One of them, the one who was called Peixotin, Francisco Peixoto Liz. He was from the city of Rio de Janeiro. He visited Chico at a time when all of the friends of Chico from his hometown used to participate for a whole month of meetings, which Peixotinho did as a physical effects medium. In these meetings, the spirits would materialize themselves full of light, because Peixotinho had this peculiarity in his mediumship. He was able to materialize objects, spirits, and everything would emit light. And Chico said, Peixotinho was the medium of physical effects who was evangelized, one of the most that I've met. What's the difference? He was evangelized. So the manifestations that occurred through him were then extraordinary, luminous, bright. Diverse spirits mat materialized through him. Chico told us after he, disin he left that he had the mediumship of physical effects and he had it himself. The first ones who manifested were José Gros, dear spirit, who was part of the gang of the lamp burner and he was murdered by a, a gas burner because he was very generous, because he had tremendous compassion for the places that this gang leader would go and kill people. So he would go in front and warn them. So when the gang owner discovered, he went and he shot him. So he was telling this to us as he was materialized with the assistance of the spirit, Sister Sheila, who was a German spirit who gives assistance to many in Brazil, who was a nurse from Bezerra de Menezes. So he tells us that the bullet hit his body and the body fell, and his spiritual body continued running after the gang man until he met Sheila, who took him in her arms and guided him so that he could educate himself spiritually. So this spirit was used in the 1950s by many mediums, including Shiku. In the 1950s, after Peixotinho had left, Shiku, by the invitation of Arnaldo Roche, who was a director of mediumistic meetings, who was the former husband of the spirit Mei Mei, he suggested to Shiko, I think you also have this mediumship, let's try to do a session. And Shiko agreed. So they did a few sessions and light began to appear and manifestations began to occur until suddenly this spirit José Grosso materialized and he started joking with people and talking with people. In the next session, Emmanuel himself materialized as a senator dressed in his tunic of six, six feet tall, bringing his chest filled and a, and a beam of light holding on his hand. He entered the, the room, according to all of those that saw it, Arnaldo Roche and all of these people that were there. He said, 
this is a domestic garden the mission of the medium is with the book because the book educates Arnaldo Rocha used to say um, Arnaldo Rocha used to say repete com uh -huh. he used to say that that um, manda those in charge are the ones who, who give the orders are the ones that those in charge give the orders and the smart ones obey so Chico stopped doing those kinds of manifestations of physical effects because in truth his commitment was the spiritual revelation through books the city, his hometown in this type of mediumship for his life, which is very beautiful, was the birthplace of the works that Chico used to say, Astros? Astros, like the star works, the revealing works, the works of revelation. When he went to the other city of Uberaba, in his move, he explained that his move to the other city so that he could leave his family in peace because his family would suffer with all those people going and visiting him. And the other motive was that Emmanuel wanted to talk to the world and Uberaba was a city that was closer to São Paulo and Chico used to travel to São Paulo all the time where he was greeted by people who had interviews with him from all over the world. So you have an idea. In the home of the person, Nina Galvez, he was received by Dr. Nag Hamendras Baraji, who was a scholar from the Jaipur University in India, who had documented over a thousand cases of reincarnation. This man interviewed Chico, and at the end of the conversation, as he was leaving, the tran with the translator, who was the professor Hernani Guimarães Andrade, who was a researcher in the spiritual realm, very close to Chico. He said to this man that Chico was a saintly man because he was able to recognize one of the greatest, greater avatars in the world because Chico told him to this gentleman from India a visit that he did outside his physical body to the Himalayas, where he went to the meeting of the Lamas, who would meet anonymously in predetermined time in order to irradiate light to the whole world for world peace. Emmanuel took Shiku to that place, and Shiku witnessed this meeting of these vibrations to world peace of, by the Lamas. So this man was very impressed, because this is something truly uh, locked, a secret locked under seven keys, and so she could describe this whole process for him. So he was recognized as such. Upon receiving these star-like works, when he went to Uberaba in order to expose himself to the world, from Uberaba to Sao Paulo, he began to channel the books that were called satellite books, which are the books that explain the so-called star books. So these are the books of messages, that bring ideas and they elaborate the ones that are called star works. The star works are the works by André Luiz, the basic books by Emmanuel, which are the novels, and the works by Brother X, Irmãoxis. Those are truly revealing in nature. And they rescue the primitive Christianity, which was the pure Christianity, which the churches later disturbed. So when we analyze the subject matter, we're going to remember another medium so that we can understand the richness of this mediumship. Dona Ivone Pereira is the name of this medium. <laughs> Slow, please. <laughs> Dona Ivone Pereira, she was visited by Chico in the 1950s in Belo Horizonte, and she did not know, but the, her first book Memories of a Suicide was already published by the Spirits Federation in Rio. She lived in the neighborhood 
called Sagrada Familia. When they arrived, Givaldo Franco and Arnaldo Rocha came together. They were eyewitnesses. Chico arrived, hugged Ivone. She had her arm broken at the time, and he told her, a spirit pushed me. I fell, and I broke my arm. These are mediumistic things, folks. So he turned to her and said, My daughter, we are here with the presence of, of our dear brother Andrea Luis, who is the author of 16 works through the mediumship of Chico that reveals the spirit realm. He was a doctor, a scientist. We are here with his presence with us. And our dear Andrea Luis is telling us that you came to this lifetime from the lower regions of the spirit realm because you committed suicide in your previous lifetime. Ivone had two suicides, one in France and the second one in Portugal. So she reincarnates from this last one in Portugal, she reincarnates in Brazil. And he's here telling us that this book that you just channeled is the best book for the next 50 years, from 50 years ago and for the next 50 years regarding this subject matter. And Chico explained to her the question of mediumship, her mediumship. Mediumship, we sometimes say that it's atoneful or expiating or missionary in nature, but mediumship in itself is neutral. Like the universal cosmic fluid, in itself it's neutral. What changes mediumship is the state of the medium. Ivone was in an expiatory process because she abandoned her life in a way that was not warranted. She, she broke a law not to kill. So she was in the process of guilt redeeming herself. That was why she reincarnated. She suffered tremendously. Why? Do you know why she suffered so much? Because she was, as a medium, she would see, feel, hear in spirits. What kind of spirits would look for her? Suicide spirits. And when they would come with their dramas, she had the desire to kill herself again. She had the urge to end her life. But spiritist doctrine was what sustained her. She said she would be unable to be victorious without the help of the gospel of Jesus and the spiritist doctrine because the moral strength and the guidance and the awareness about the topics of life and death supported her. It's what gave her strength in order to overcome. So Ivone was a medium of an expiatory native nature and she resisted 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 and she developed such a great level of love for the work of charity charitable work and she was able to understand that her suffering was on second plane because she needed to help those who were suffering more than her she made out of her pain the means to help other pains that were far greater because she understood what they were going through. This enabled Chico to name her, to, to call her the silent her heroine, because only she knew what she was going through, nobody else. This helps us to understand that a mother, when losing a child, and many of them to tell themselves, tell us in the fraternal counselings that we have, after a while, I have to cry in hiding because nobody accepts it anymore. Nobody understands it. The pain is too great. So it's the lonely pain. And Ivoni had that. When we observe the trajectory of the Ivone's life, she goes through this expiatory period, matures herself out of the love that she places and her resignation, her humility, the seriousness of her doctrinal work, taking everything very seriously. She goes through the mechanisms of trials then, no longer expiations. She begins to sense of some relief and begins to produce novels. And with the, along with the spirit benefactors, she says 
in messages and accounts that Dr. Bezerra de Menezes, who had been her father in France when they were Protestants in that reincarnation, and she will tell us in that book, in the magnificent novels that she was able to transmit to us. When Dr. Bezerra she, she had a very easy mediumship to leave her body, out-of-body experiences that were conscious, and she would go to the spirit realm. Because if you're just under trance, somnambulistic trance, it's just the body. But if you're able to see things in the spirit realm, then it is mediumship, because mediumship implies being a bridge between two different dimensions. When Yvonne would leave her body, Dr. Bezerra would get her. He would take her to the lower regions in the spirit realm for the work of assistance of the ones that were suffering. This, that was the characteristic of her dear Bezerra, who was very devoted to the ones in suffering. And she said that when her father, Charles, the spirit, would get her out of her body, he would take her to nicer and more pleasant regions in the spirit realm, and so she would see beauty in nature and landscapes and creations that were beautiful. So that's when she had a chance to rest. But she said she liked the task with Dr. Bizerra because she had gotten used to suffering. She had gotten into the habit to give of herself to help others that were suffering in order to alleviate her own pain. When she reaches a more advanced age in her reincarnation, her mediumship abilities begin to go into decline. She starts as if to close her channels, and she was so honest that she confessed that to everybody. We saw letters where she writes that to people, asking, please don't seek me anymore. Look for spirit centers where there are new mediums who are capable to help you. She was honest about that. She's a model for us. So when she arrives in this advanced age of decline in her mediumship, she tells her friend Joaquin, which today has become a book, published book, in a confidential letter, she tells him that only now, in her 80 years of age, that she was able to leave her, her body and was able to finally meet for the first time her spirit guide because she used to say it was her father, Charles, or Dr. Bizerra. But she only got to know her real spirit guide, who was an ancient Egyptian sorcerer of great elevation. He was a tutor, her mentor in the spirit realm, who only made himself appear to her when she was 80 years old. Why? She had to recover that merit because she had abandon her life twice. So she worked for an entire existence feeling the effects of those two suicidal reincarnations. So this work of Ivoni is extraordinary. She has a book called um, Recollections of Mediumship, which is a phenomenal work for those that are interested in the study of mediumship. The spirit is center. We have groups that get formed in those bases of conscience that we try to imprint on the mediums. Physical effects by this medium, Peixotinho. The physical effects medium is going to experience peculiarities because he could be only for healing purposes. Every healing medium who has a very ex accentuated ability is one of physical effects. The healing mediumship depends on the emanations of ectoplasm, so therefore it is a physical effects mediumship, even though the effect is not to materialize but to heal the body. Do you understand? So we have, we have the peculiarities. Don Ivone would go out of her body, clairvoyance, clairaudience and psychography, psychophony. Arnaldo tell us who directed her meeting. She was for a whole month in the house of Chico Xavier. She's, he said her mediumship was amazing because she was very sensitive. 
The first manifestation she gave was of a suicide spirit who had lost his head in the train tracks. And the spirit manifested, desperately looking for his head. And he said that the assistance work was impressive. But when she channeled Dr. Bezerra de Menezes, the benefactor spirit, he said he had never seen such a transformation of her facial features. She had become Bezerra himself, truly. So much was the affinity she had with him. Well, of course, she was his daughter in France. So that explains the affinity and the interconnection, which is what used to happen between Chico and Emmanuel because he was his father for many lifetimes. We have novels like 2,000 years ago and Hail Christ, where he was Chico Xavier's father, first of Flavia and then Livia. Her name was Livia in, in Hail Christ, and Chico had this name. So he tells of his reminiscences and recollections. And so they tell us, they asked him once, how long was his connection with Emmanuel? He said, well, more or less 40,000 years. So it was during Atlantis, which came even before our Aryan civilization, their connection. So this demonstrate that they came from the star, star Capella. So these spiritual leaders are not from the earth. The people of the earth are still rather new, they're still beginning. The great masters came from other worlds uh, to help out of sol solidarity to our planet, because Spiritism will explain that of the Adamic race and refer itself to Capella in the book The Exiles of Capella. When we analyze these types of mediumships and these proposals, that we have in the Spiritist Doctrine, we're going to see the mediumistic group. Medium, mediumship is of the being, it's not the centers, but the center is the school and the hospital and the office and the temple, where we're going to find best ways to apply this resource, which is from our daily lives. If I'm having lunch, I can feel something different. Yvonne, for instance, would say that sometimes she was in a bus with a book open, and suddenly when she would look up on all of those faces around, reading with her. Do you understand? It's something that who's not very sensitive doesn't notice. Some people get a little frightened. She's m reported this many times. Many spirits had asked her to write through her mediumship many illustrious names of literature. And they, and they had asked to write things with her that they used to write on the earth. And she said, no thank you, because my commitment is with the Spiritist Doctrine. So now we begin to understand why there are mediums we're going to enter the meeting. Now we're going to enter the mediumistic meeting itself, which sheds light into our daily life. Every medium who's a psychophonic medium is a sensitive, because his sensitivity is the basis for all mediumships. If the, if the individual is not sensitive, he doesn't capture anything. It could be regional. For instance, a medium who's a clairvoyant feels a lot of pain in this area, in this center of force. And there is even a mystical representation in the east with the third eye. There are mediums that will say, but Wagner, if it hurts, it looks like something, an arrow is lacerating, entering through it, and it hurts. It hurts a lot, and it hurts. It depends a lot on the sensitivity of the moment, and it hurts. Because the center of force that's active, they're going to say it's pain. Well, it's actually energy. It seems that my forehead is swollen. Yes, that's correct. It is an exteriorization of the center of force. This is something that it is in the books by the spirits, and we don't understand. My throat is in pain. I feel something that is swollen on my throat. Yes, are you a speaking medium? Well, that explains it. 
is the ex externalization of the center of force. Uh, meet him when he's in trance. If we could, if we could say, the individual has his nervous system in the surface of his body. These are centers of force that open themselves, the channels, so that he's able to be a bridge to capture the energies, the vibrations, the registries that has to do with the type of communication that he can be an intermediary for. These are peculiarities. So when we sit around the table and we feel strange and we lose focus and we get dizzy and our heart starts to beat and it starts beating in a weird way and we start to, to oscillate and go back and forth. Trance. You leave your body, think that it's out of shape, bent, doesn't fit well. You feel your spatial uh, notions. It feels like I'm facing backwards. All of this can happen. And this according to the individual. The circulation changes because of the glands that work in a more intense way. The individual can, if he's not very capable, he can be, his veget neurovegetative state can be threatened. He can feel like he's going to have diarrhea or he sweats profusely. He could feel nausea depending on the vibration. I'm citing some examples so we can understand how it really affects, how it truly affects. The more sensitive the person, the more they're going to feel these changes. There are people that will leave their body and feel like they're dying because they're going to lose sense of touch and contact with their body and it's like they're entering a darkness at first and then they start to see things that are not around her in her domain and so they get desperate. All of this and much more happens. I went up I, and I remember going all the way up to the ceiling and then looking that I was down there because mediumship is not related to the spirit is center. But the person needs to have the ideal environment in order to drain its mediumship because it's not out in the middle of the street. Imagine the number of spirits that leave the manholes and leave the planet Earth. We get frightened when, when we don't know what's going on. But this is as old as time. When Chico visited, sometime in the middle of the night, when he would go catch the train, they said that while the sun was not shining, he would notice that on the floors, on the ground, he was in the capital city of his state, he said that from the ground, heads would surface f from the floor, but only when the sun was not out. When the sun was out, it didn't happen. The sun is very important. It's a topic for another time. Because the sun deactivates miasmas and pestilences. If it weren't for the sun, our, our earth would be impossible to live in spiritually. It would be exceedingly heavy a burden in our psyche. That's why these inferior spirits that walk around in hordes, they are able to endure the sun. Some can, some cannot even endure the sun. It depends on their level of vibration. We have a nucleus on Earth. Um element. Um element. We have uh, copper. We, these are elements on Earth, such as n copper and. And they have such a density. They have a type of vibration that is very heavy. The entities feel attracted to it. When they lose their vibrational grounding, they feel attracted to these two elements. This is what justifies the smell of... The smell of, I don't know, rotten vegetables. It has to do with their connection with those elements of those vibrations. Here, 
is a story to illustrate. One day, Sheikh, when he was struggling in Ubarab, enduring attacks and people in need and having to multiply resources, you, material resources to help a lot of people, he was at home and he started to smell this really rotten vegetable. So this is something that he told us. He started to smell that and he got a, a bit nauseated and very unpleasant. Suddenly, in the middle of the room, a being appeared who was animalized, deformed in, a, in his appearance. He saw that being and he asked God for assistance. The spirit looked at him and said, Did you call me, Chico Xavier? Chico said in that moment he was already praying. The voice of Emmanuel came inside of him and said, treat him with respect. And Shiku said, oh my friend, my brother, my life here is so difficult. I'm suffering so much that I like that in the name of God or in the name of the forces that you venerate, that you perhaps could help me. The spirit looked at him and said, Yeah, Chico, with who you is really hard. And then he disappeared. Chico said that this may last, lasted only a minute, but it felt like an eternity because of the heavy vibration. Can you imagine? The smell, by the way, was sulfur. The rotten vegetables, sulfur. So we are in the mediumistic meeting, and the medium is sitting down with the, with all the mediums around him and the director of the medium, so that we can understand mediumship in a more practical way. So the spirits see all these these people have been studying for a long time, are doing charitable work, their hearts have improved, they have moral conditions. There's a special vibration in the air. Let's bring a few be a few spirits that are more angry and more dense, those and their vibration, of course. So let's suppose that there is a medium who is a clairvoyant that's observing. So the meeting begins. They do the prayer, elevate their thoughts, the mentors arrive. Each medium, each worker has a spirit present of goodness, usually in white, that gives assistance, dressed in white. When the clairvoyant medium comes, he says, wow, what a beautiful halo of light, I notice. Because usually the vibration that is formed projects itself above the heads of each member of the group. It hovers over and projects itself. This emanation is being produced by everyone, but it creates this halo of light above. The spirit looks and says, oh wow, we're going to work so much, so, the benefactor spirits. So that was the moment of the prayer. So the coordinator of the meeting then will say, let's bring the spirits that are in need, let them come in. So all of those spirits come in. So now these are no longer suffering spirits, these are more very angry spirits, rebellious. Their energy comes in. The clairvoyant medium that sees it is going to see and see something that's saying, oh my God, such a huge dark cloud. This dark cloud comes above this halo and invades this psyche and turns off, it dims out all this light. The medium who is a clairvoyant said, oh my God, we are lost. That's what he thinks because usually that's how it happens, it's what he thinks. The benefactors are taking precautions and are doing things. What happened? Compensation. The energy was high, so then they allowed a quantity of energies and spirits that were low. Who would turn off this light, but it would be equivalent to that vibratory quantum of positive energy that was present. So darkness was there, but a lot of things, but a lot of things were deactivated as a result of that. 
So then one entity comes and communicates, another entity comes and communicates, and so on. So it begins to produce relief and alleviate until they are, they are then taken and guided. And in this mechanism, it could be that a spirit will accept at that moment to be guided, or he will at least take away something from the group, but he will leave the group feeling a little bit different. Why? Here's the psyche of the medium, and he has the support of the medium, because a medium without a meeting is his hostage. That's why it's hard to work outside. Because the medium is like a flower, but he needs to have the root and the flowers around him as a support. So the medium psyche arrives, so the spirit arrives, does he find the vibratory field, he connects with his psyche. The spirit then throws onto the medium all that is his, but then the medium also throws what's his to the spirit, so there was an exchange. There's a balance that comes out. The medium may feel, at, the, may, the medium may feel a little temporarily bad, feels bad, but the spirit leaves feeling relieved with different ideas. So there was a vibratory compensation, and that is charity. Did you know that? That's charity. To carry the burdens of one another, writes Paul. That's what it is. That's why Kardec emphasized in his work the importance of this type of this guidance, counseling of the spirits in order to help them change their ways. So the spirits are guided or taken. Sometimes they will leave, just go away. There's no violence. No one is required to stay. Or they're guided when there's a possibility. So there are soldier spirits. There are spirits that take care of regions that are very in need of protection. There are spirits of better condition, nurses, different specialties, just like Earth. So as the meeting comes to an end, the mediums feel, feel relieved. They need to begin to sigh, thank God, thank God. So the director of the meeting, our time has come to an end getting to the end. We're now going to ask for the mentors that help the mediums, the benefactors that can help them to re Let's pray for the ones that are suffering the world, etc. Just giving an example. Right? That's what we usually see in mediumistic meetings. Let's make a prayer and thank for, so, for helping so many people. They do the prayer at this moment comes a horde, it comes the horde of the cleaning crew, because spirits come in, usually bringing resources from nature, like herbs, or from the spirit realm. And the pictures that are formed for those that are able to see are quite interesting. I'll give you an idea. Brazil is a very mixed country, so mediums say, Wow, how beautiful. I'm seeing the native Brazilian Indians from the rainforest bring this energy from the rainforest. Medium is able to decode in that way. Another medium see all these elderly spirits helping. Can't it happen? Yes. In Brazil, everything's a party. Everyone's a worker of the good. Or they're going to say, I'm seeing a waterfall, or the ocean is coming with the waves all over us. Look how beautiful. Because the benefactor, who is more graduated, was able to imprint this image onto the medium. Everything is possible during this cleaning crew because of the help. And where are we going to find this? In spring, in nature, which is the motherly aspect of God. He shows the, his motherly side through nature by taking it in our arms and nourishing us so that we can evolve this way. So after the cleaning crew comes, maybe there's a communication of a guide to help the group. Sometimes there isn't. But as the meeting ends, 
the meeting ends, usually there's a few comments or an evaluation. Well, in that moment, it was very beautiful. We were all in heaven, and all of a sudden, there was a huge shock. And I felt I was falling into darkness. Oh, me too. I felt really bad. My heart started racing. Everybody will feel something different. And then it went better, and it got better. I began to pray. And then suddenly, and this time came, everything's feeling good. It's like there was a storm. Look how it goes. There's a, it was like there was a huge storm. And now comes the calm after the storm. I feel lighter and breathing better. And the benefactor spirits look and say, look how such a beautiful work. They were able to sanitize the earth, sanitize spirits from their inner world, and they sanitized themselves, heal themselves. That's the work of the good. One meeting is capable of a lot. When the elements that are part of it, the individuals, respect one another and are focused in the cause, in the work, and not in their belly buttons. The greatest impediment of a work of light is called personalism, vanity, presumption. That, that doesn't work. That's gossip. That's useless. When the person says, oh, what's, what's wrong? Let him work. It's all good. Shiku used to love to encourage the mediums. He loved to encourage them. So we raised a few questions in order to give a more practical nature and shedding light about mediumship, about these aspects which we hold dear in our spiritist groups, in our spiritist movement in Brazil, all over the world, so that we can reflect about the grandeur of this work. Everyone is useful. Chico did his work because his task was to bring the revelation and to rescue primitive Christianity and to show that spiritist doctrine is renewed Christianity from its primitive. But with three aspects of religion, philosophy and science, because we're no longer in the realm of mythology and mysticism. That's no longer applicable. It's within logic, common sense, reason that is clarified. Because we need to know where we're stepping. Faith it was born out of fear. Way back when, fear made faith be born. Faith then developed, became an instrument of bargaining and negotiation because it's out of fear. And when it reaches this point of, of reasoned faith, reason that is clarified begins to remove the fear of faith. Faith itself cleanses itself from that fearful basis. So it projects the being way out into the infinite. And we look out into the infinite fearlessly because we know that the primitive parts of the path have been already tracked. Now we need to purify and cleanse further.